Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. There's a song that has been burning my spirit. Can you take it down for me? I hope you're able to sing it. Your breath in our lungs. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken great are you lord great are you lord great are you lord one more time let me take it from here it says you give life you are love you bring life darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord great are you lord great are you lord. now i like this part beautiful part says it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, only Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath. In our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. So we pour out. the world will bow down and say you are God every man will bow down and say you are King one more time yes the world, yes, the world will bow down and say you are God ah. every man Say you are king. So let's start right now. Why could we wait? You're the king of glory. Feel this place. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Spirit, bless the name of the Lord. Let us be a moment of worship, deep reflection on the mercy and faithfulness of God. Someone is giving God praise, quality praise, quality thanks, quality praise, quality thanks. Quality praise. Quality thanks. 
go ahead, lift up your hands, bless the name of the Lord. Koinonia Abuja, Zaria, US, Canada, UK, lift your hands and let's bless the name of the Lord. The mighty God, the King of Kings, Alpha, Omega, beginning, the ending. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you tonight. We declare that we love you. We declare that we love you. We declare that we love you. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And I pray tonight that you will bless your people yet again. That you will lift your people yet again. That you will transform our lives yet again. That you will heal your people. You will deliver the oppressed in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk up to 10 people, tell them congratulations for making it for this first service. 10 people, congratulations. Congratulations. Two more people and you're ready to sit. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a big hand clap, a big shout of praise. And then please, you may be seated. It's good to see everyone. And um, we're honored to be having our first Koinonia Sunday service here in the UK. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's celebrate our online family now, Abuja. Give them a taste of what it feels like when we clap for you. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing about the ministry of the spirit is that there is no distance in the spirit hallelujah the bible says now the lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty so i welcome everyone in the name of jesus to our family following online the lord will do you good in jesus name just a few salutations and then we'll get to the ministry of the word i'm honored to um acknowledge and appreciate the lead pastor of the life church this beautiful facility pastor jock james and his wife let's give them a big big god bless you thank you sir thank you ma'am hallelujah and then we have i'm told here pastor dara uh, the parish pastor of rccg where blessings to you please let's honor them god bless you God bless you. God bless you, sir. Bless you, my please. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Who is ready for tonight? The only way to be transformed is to have access to the word of God. Outside of the word of God, there is no possibility for transformation. By the way, I'm told we have a number of the members of this church here present tonight. Am I right on that? So if you are a member of this beautiful church, please stand. Please stand. Koinonia, let's give them a big God bless you. Big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Now, please lend me your attention. God's method has always been and will always be his word. His method to lift is by his word. His method to transform is by his word. His method to bless is by his word. So when God wants to help a man, he makes available his word hallelujah praise the name of the lord the bible says he sent forth his word and his word he let them and delivered them from all 
their destructions. That means when Satan wants to frustrate any life and any destiny, he will cause you to be careless or negligent as touching the word of God. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very quickly, let me refer everyone to a teaching. This is the message for those who have not listened to it. I want you to please take the time, go on our YouTube page and look for it. This is the message. There I teach on the seven doctrinal pillars that make up the teachings in this ministry we're not careless about the ministry of the word we've not been given the assignment to teach everything and to say everything there are boundaries there are coordinates god has granted us grace to serve his word but we do that in obedience and we do that with intelligence so allow me for a minute or two to recap very quickly the kinds of teachings that come from this platform number one we have been given the mandate to communicate the message of salvation. The message of salvation contained within our teachings are thoughts that lead men to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is our principal mandate. The Bible says God desires that all men be saved. All men. All men be saved. And then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Number two. Through this platform, you will hear always the message of transformation. I have taught and you've heard that there is a journey beyond salvation. That salvation is only the initial experience. That is not all there is. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal. The Bible says that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. So the journey to salvation does not stop just at the initial declaration of your faith in Christ, there is still another layer. It is called transformation. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Paul said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. It is possible for a believer to be saved and not transformed. You see that? Transformation happens by the renewing of the mind. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye renewed by, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. And by that transformation, you will prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Number three, we have been given the grace to communicate the message of empowerment. Empowerment. To empower means to make you sufficient for any job. To empower is beyond just being anointed. To empower you mentally, to empower you spiritually. The message of empowerment. This is where we emphasize the unique transforming ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Number four, very quickly, we have been given the message of the supernatural. We are conveyors of God's miracle working power. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 15 and verse 19. Very profound statement. Romans chapter 15 and verse 14. He said, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That means if your gospel does not capture signs and wonders, it has not been fully preached. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the Spirit of God, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Number five, we have been given grace to communicate to the body of Christ the message of purpose. The message of purpose. That means there is more to the Christian experience beyond receiving beyond having beyond claiming are we together that what gives value to every investment of the spirit upon your life is that it is connected to purpose in fact what gives value to anything you have is its ability to serve purpose if you have wealth without purpose you are called a rich fool are we together yes 
what gives value to every pursuit what gives value to our receiving what gives value to our passion to acquire to have is that we turn them into tools that serve the purposes of god this is where we teach on kingdom advance this is where we teach on societal transformation we help believers know that they are supposed to transit from being people who are infants to people who are matured empowered and then they become witnesses Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says you shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem and in samaria in judea and to the uttermost part of the earth number six we have been granted grace by god to communicate to the body of christ the message of unity and love the message of unity and love in addition to the message of salvation transformation empowerment the supernatural purpose we have as a sixth mandate the message of unity and love i am convinced that without unity and love not much can be accomplished as far as god's purposes are concerned because no matter how anointed you are you cannot fulfill this mandate alone there is a need for unity and there is a need for love the bible calls love the bond of perfectness are we together god's nature is not power god's nature is not wisdom god's nature is love so the proof that you are really transformed is not just enlightenment but love you do not measure transformation in the spirit just by the acquisition of spiritual information you measure transformation to the degree to which the love of christ is at work in you you believe that shout a loud amen. amen and then number seven which is the final pillar we have been given grace to communicate the message of lasting peace and fulfillment lasting peace and fulfillment this is where we help believers understand success from a biblical standpoint fulfillment from a biblical standpoint we propose a template for the believer that gives him satisfaction beyond this realm beyond the here and now hallelujah that means every time you listen to any teaching whatsoever it must carry one more or all of these signatures otherwise it is not koinonia so when we say this is koinonia this is what we mean that you are in an environment that affords you an opportunity to hear the gospel to be saved to be transformed to be empowered to experience the supernatural are we together to experience love and unity to experience purpose to experience lasting success and fulfillment praise the name of the lord so you do well to get the teaching listen to it again in detail but for tonight um, we're going to be discussing something very briefly and then we'll pray the lord placed a strong burden on my heart and i believe tonight's message is first for us here and then for our global family but that this extends to the body of christ are you ready to learn perfected true knowledge perfected through knowledge i'm teaching on the topic perfected through knowledge we're going to be examining the burden of ignorance that ignorance can be a burden that a believer should not desire to carry every believer can be perfected and that perfection comes through knowledge hebrews chapter 6 please from verse 1 to 3 thank you holy spirit for your wisdom we receive grace in jesus name paul is speaking now and he says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ he says let us go on to perfection let us go on to perfection it's a call it's a charge paul is charging the people to not remain at a certain level in the spirit he's saying therefore leaving he doesn't mean forget about it he means in addition to all that you have heard as foundations let us go there is another layer a higher layer in the spirit let us go on to perfection he says not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works 
and of faith towards God, verse 2, of the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Then he says, verse 3, and this we will do if God permits. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark chapter 10, please, and verse 21. I had uh, preached a very beautiful message. By the way, you'd want to listen to it. If you know any young man who loves God um, and is successful but is not really managing his success well, please give him this message called The Rich Young Ruler. Very profound message. The Rich Young Ruler. The Rich Young Ruler. It is a clarion call to a generation. It's a press to be wholesome, a press to be complete. And we'll take an idea from that teaching tonight. Mark chapter 10, please, verse 21. The Bible says, And Jesus beholding him, him being the rich young ruler now. So the context is that he came to Jesus and he said, um, Good master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Then Jesus replies and says, Why do you call me good? There is none who is called good except God. And then he tells him, um, you know the laws. Do not do this. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not kill. And he said, well, I have done this right from my youth. I have kept it. And the Bible says Jesus beholding him. He loved him for his sincerity of heart. And then he said to him, one thing thou lackest. My teaching begins now. One thing thou lackest. You've kept certain things, you've known certain things, you've practiced certain things, the results are obvious, but you have not gotten to a state of perfection, you are not yet whole, because one thing thou lackest. May the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing I want to establish tonight is that we have a mandate we have a mandate by god as believers among the many mandates that we have is that we must press to eventually become manifestations of the glory of god it is not just god's desire it is a mandate upon every believer that every believer in christ has this call and this mandate that you must evolve to eventually become a reflection of the glory of God. That means you become a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions that are contained in God as revealed through Christ. Are we together? So God's goal is not just to get you to be rich. God's goal is not just to get you to have a job. God's goal is not just to get you to have a good husband, good wife, good children. If that is your orientation, your Christian experience will frustrate you eventually. Because if and when you do have all of these things, you will be at a loss as to what else to do with your life. It is the reason why a lot of believers are getting tired and fed up of church, unfortunately because they do not know that there is an end point there is an end product to all this prayer all this fasting all these vigils all these bible studies all these um you know spiritual activities you'll be tempted to ask to what end why do i pray and have to keep praying why do i study the bible and have to keep studying the bible why do i come to church and then i'm required to keep coming there is an end are we together god has a goal he's going somewhere with you and i and the bible tells us that the end of it is that we eventually become manifestations of the glory of god beyond being a house owner as wonderful as that is beyond being a father beyond being a mother beyond being um, a graduate beyond ha having excellent career if you peg your christian experience to achieving these things alone i give you a guarantee you will be frustrated eventually are we together yeah so it's the first revelation that i want everybody to have that god desires that his multifaceted dimensions be made manifest in and through the saints that eventually not immediately the seed of perfection the seed of glory is born within your spirit from the moment you are saved but it must grow it must be nurtured it grows from an incorruptible seed it should re not remain a seed it should grow to become a tree 
and if you are that tree in john 15 then you must demonstrate it by bearing fruit john chapter 15 he said i am the vine then he says ye are the branches are we together and then he says in verse 8 he says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 16 you have not chosen me the bible says i like to quote these scriptures because they are so true they've become a reality in my life you have not chosen me but i have chosen you listen carefully to go and bear fruit to go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain that your fruit will remain hallelujah so god's goal for you and i is that we eventually through our commitment to prayer a commitment to the word a commitment to church and all the spiritual activities we're involved with it's important that we know that god intends for us to evolve until we get to a point where we become manifestations of his glory here on earth do you believe that absolutely the bible says in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory there you find it again there is a dimension of god's glory that will be revealed in us there is a dimension of god's glory the glory of god represents every dimension that is found in god his wisdom his power his favor his goodness so when we talk about the glory of god we're not just talking about some cloud or some smoke no the wisdom of god his glory the favor of god his glory that means we get to a point where paul calls us living epistles please say that after me living epistles absolutely he says we are living epistles read by many that someone looks at your life and within your life they can see the beauty of god's glory the beauty of god's wisdom the power of god that you give expression to the invisible god just like jesus did while he was on earth that the invisible god they are able to see they can give him definition by looking at your life the wisdom of god that flows through you the power of god that flows through you the grace of god that emanates from your person are we together that it compels all and sundry to know that this is how god looks if it is true that you are the son of god then it means you must look like your father someone learning now so god desires that we become expressions of his glory next time you submit yourself to prayer next time you submit yourself to learning the word next time you come to church have this at the back of your mind that i am god's project in motion the project is that eventually line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little that eventually you evolve until you become a manifestation of god's glory you believe that shout amen, amen. That means by this time next year, that if I see you, you should not be this version of you. If you are still this version of you, then it means you are not growing. Are we together now? Yeah. The glory of God. Number two, the second thought tonight, perfected by knowledge. The level of glory, listen carefully, please the level of glory and grace that is revealed through any believer is a function of the level of spiritual knowledge such a person has the level of glory and grace that is revealed through any believer will always be a function of the level of spiritual knowledge that such a person has that means at every point in your christian experience i can measure the dimension of god's glory that is at work in your life by the level of spiritual illumination the level of light that you have are we together yes so light translates to glory light translates to glory great light great glory little light limited glory are we together 
so that if you want to see the glory of god at work in your life you do not pursue his glory or pursue to see the manifestation of his glory by looking for the glory the glory is a byproduct of light it's a byproduct of knowledge that when you stay to contend for light high level spiritual illumination eventually your life will evolve the raw material for glory is light so the more of god's light that is at work in you through knowledge the more of that glory will be revealed in your life who is understanding me so far every dimension of glory and result in the kingdom demands a certain degree of knowledge in order to manifest now i'll tell you this and, and i say this with every sense of you know humility and respect there are many believers claiming certain dimensions of god's glory desiring to see it manifest in their lives without the requisite level of spiritual understanding that supports that manifestation i'll give you an instance there are so many people who want to walk in the healing anointing so many people want to walk in signs and wonders but they do not know that what you call signs and wonders what you call the miraculous is a dimension of god's glory and there is a body of revelation that is connected to that outcome if you do not press to have that body of knowledge you will only have your desire and it will remain as a desire it will never manifest are we together just because you read in your bible that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover ah you see spiritual things are in layers and most of them are shrouded in mysteries if you read the bible as a historian you'll be disappointed many times because there are many information that the holy spirit will have to open your eyes to see between the lines so when you read it you will think he just says just go and lay hands on the sick but you've tried it many times and you know the result quite honestly that it did not work but you can leave that realm of trial and error and step into a level of perfection by knowing that every dimension of God's glory that can be made manifest is available but not under every condition. There is a requisite body of spiritual knowledge. There is a requisite body of spiritual knowledge. Let me say that again. There is a requisite body of spiritual knowledge that is connected to every dimension of the glory of God. Influence is a dimension of the glory of God. If you desire kingdom influence, it will not happen just by claiming it. Mm -mm. You will need to press for the dimension of spiritual knowledge that is connected to that result. Who is learning? If you want to prosper in the kingdom, what you call prosperity, whether in finance or any aspect of your life, it is a dimension of God's glory. But that dimension of God's glory is connected to a body of spiritual truth. The Bible calls it marvelous light. Are we together? We are a chosen generation, he says, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. He says that we have been called forth called out of darkness into his marvelous light so it's important for you to know that every dimension of god's glory that is in god as revealed in and through christ is available for the saints however the condition is that you must press for the level of light the level of spiritual illumination my god this is powerful it's powerful we translate our desires and we call them prayer requests and sometimes we're hoping that someone would lay hands and speak over them and there is a place for that but i am telling you the way we transit from glory to glory is to move from light to light are we together revelation to revelation knowledge to knowledge in fact show me a man who does not know anything about god's glory but keeps pressing for light i still show you a man who will reveal the glory of god but show me a man who is obsessed about glory and ignores light he is one man who will talk about dimensions of glory he will never enter into the experience of and this unfortunately 
is the lot of many believers so we know that god heals but it never works through our lives we know that god prospers but it never works through our lives we know that god wants us to make progress but progress is never captured in our lives are we together we know that god restores but we're never able to command restoration we know that there is such a reality in the spirit called favor but it's never captured in our lives it is frustrating to keep talking about things that can be but then it never manifests it is not the will of god are we together now it's not even governed by the love of god he's granted us access to these things already the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things is, is that in your bible the things that god uh, has in store for them that love him but the bible says but these things have been revealed to us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things how many things all things yea the deep things of god the deep things of god the deep things of god so if i desire a higher dimension of glory a greater weight of glory we call it are we together it means that i must press for a certain dimension of light please understand this second point and then you will understand my sermon tonight that if any dimension of god's glory is missing in your life it is because there is a level of light that is missing that is the one thing that you lack are we learning now thank you jesus every dimension of glory and result in the kingdom demands a certain degree of knowledge a certain degree of knowledge and so it looks like god is so indebted to certain believers certain individuals certain churches certain pastors certain personalities and it looks like he seems to ignore others it seems so but it is not so what governs the results is the light that you carry are we together so on one hand someone will blow a trumpet like gideon and thirty-two thousand people will show up another person will blow a trumpet are we together now and nobody will show up the difference is not the will of god the difference is not the love of god the same lord is rich unto all the difference is the light that sponsored that activity one person will say in the name of jesus be blessed you will shout amen and then nothing happens another person says in the name of jesus and literally a climate is scheduled over you the difference is not the will of god no in fact the difference is not even the presence of the holy spirit no <laughs> the difference is the light that sponsors your speakings the light that sponsors your doings and the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man i told you i've taught you here that there are false lights you know what a false light is it carries a semblance of spirituality it carries it looks like the truth it 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 carries a, a carriage like the truth but in the presence of situations and circumstances it cannot demonstrate because if it is the truth it must set free so when the truth stands before bondage and it cannot set free it is called a false light do you know what a false light is many ideas some of them religious ideas some of them age-long ideas with all due respect some of them traditional ideas some of them fabrications from our frustrations we just use our frustrations as a canvas to paint an idea about God. Hmm. Who is learning? So many believers are frustrated because they are unable to see the glory of God manifest in their lives they desire favor where is it they, they say they desire the goodness of god where is it and yet there are others who are walking in such enviable dimensions of god's glory and it looks like they were just fortunate or they were just lucky i'm telling you it has nothing to do with luck it has nothing to do with fortune it has everything to do with light light there is a kind of light that when you carry and, and i don't mean to sound proud but if you carry, you cannot be poor. No. 
the presence of that dimension of life forbids that you are without help there is a dimension of light that when you carry men cannot ignore you it doesn't matter whether they like you or not it has nothing to do with liking you are we together there is an instruction in the spirit that comes with every revelation that means the realm of the spirit has already been instructed to treat the career of light a certain way are we together it's like a spiritual code when you possess it there is an instruction within that light that's what we call dna medical people talk to me that dna seems to be an instruction is that not so that's how it is spiritually so there is a body of light that when you carry the instruction connected to it is that this believer should never beg it's a body of knowledge i want you to believe this there is a kind of light that when you carry the instruction there is this believer must never be small drop that person anywhere it doesn't matter the light that the person possesses will shift the person through that organization until you get to a point where god is glorified are we together there is a kind of light that when you possess the instruction there says no enchantment and no divination whatsoever must find expression in your life so it doesn't matter the cursings it doesn't matter the witchcraft if you are a possessor now the challenge is that believers make a lot of bold claims without verifying whether that light has come because you arise and you shine only when your light has come not when it is there it's always been there but the day it comes are we learning hmm. i read in my bible that the same lord is rich unto all doesn't matter if you are european american now from a from a physical standpoint there are differences there are advantages there are disadvantages but the word of god is an equalizer it remedies for everything your background could not give you hmm. who is learning so i understand that you came from a family that was not as privileged but do you know that light can do something to you it can place you in a position where right well oh dear you see by the mercies of god what you are hearing tonight my beloved people are not cunningly devised fables these are things i have proven with my own life the same lord is rich unto all the point where your disadvantage in life stops is when your light comes it says until his word came until his word came until his word came my brother it looks like uk is treating you bad and i understand there is a kind of light you have not received the instruction are we together now the territory do, listen listen the lions when daniel was in the lions den, what did the lions hear that stopped them from eating him i hope you know that was not a parable it actually happened that a man stepped into a lion's den ladies and gentlemen except if you are no longer a christian it's in your bible the bible says an angel of the lord the bible didn't even say daniel was praying an angel of the lord stepped in there and all through the night hungry lions but there was a restraint you are not the first person to be in trouble you don't know the mystery of exemption there is a mystery in the spirit and you believe me on this no tragedies should not be general the believer must sustain the intelligence to exempt yourself when there was darkness in egypt there was light in goshen it's in your bible are we learning please sit down perfected through knowledge that there is something you lack and i want to show you today and it's my prayer that everyone will find what is lacking and press with the determination to get that thing out of your life 
so that your life will be a wholesome manifestation of God's glory in the name of Jesus Christ more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my sing it one more time from the depth of your heart let it be a cry more love more power more of you in my life sing more love sing more power hallelujah please be seated so number one we have a mandate by god that we should eventually become expressions of the glory of god you still remember that number two that every level and dimension of glory you so desire has a body of spiritual knowledge called light that is connected to its manifestation do you understand that so far number three now listen to this before you write the existence of ignorance and darkness in any one area of the believer's life can frustrate the joy and the results experienced in another area don't assume you understand i'll, I'll, I'll read it again you just listen before you write that means the presence of darkness are we together the presence of ignorance in one area of your christian experience sustains the power to water down and frustrate the joy you are experiencing in another area he says hitherto you have asked for nothing he says ask and you will receive that your joy may be full that your joy may be full so there are many believers who seem frustrated but when you look at their lives you only see the areas where they have light and you're wondering why they are still frustrated i will tell you why because if one area does not work in your life it can depress you to a point that the nine other areas that are working in your life like you'll be learning <laughs> the bible says a woman had 10 talents treasures and one was missing and she became frustrated the presence of the nine notwithstanding because one was missing her joy depleted and she kept searching until she found that one then the bible says she called everybody to rejoice with her i will tell you why many people look successful and they are still depressed because the presence of darkness in one area of your christian experience can frustrate what is working and make it look like your whole life is a total failure for instance your prayer life can be excellent and then you are poor and broke i can tell you that your christian experience you will be shocked that even in the place of prayer the blessings that should come from that rich prayer life is watered down by the depression that comes from trying to look for a house rent mortgage issues are we together god desires us to experience wholesome victory i hope you know that it was god who designed this system himself yeah. so the presence of victory in one area does not guarantee joy for instance i know many wealthy people many wealthy people very wealthy people they will give up their millions and billions of dollars if they can find good health so on one hand when you see them you do not know they are sick you find them still depressed in a limousine still depressed in a mansion are we together still frustrated and you are wondering if only i can get that man's bank account there will be no reason for you know is that true 
you're saying that only because of the reality of your pain the same way where you are right now as angry as you are is somebody's desire and yet you've not found joy how many of you know now let me speak to uh, my dear brothers and sisters from africa how many do you know the amount of africans who believe that as soon as they arrive the european soil all of their problems talk to me so when they see you not smiling they think you are joking now i i hope you're not offended i'm just i'm just i'm just playing with you for a reason i'm saying it to explain this third point that if you get beguiled by two over ten even academically two over ten is not a two over ten is not b two over ten is not c two over ten is not what's the other one d two over ten is what two is a mark but you still failed There are many believers jumping over 2 over 10. Their destinies cannot command such glory enough to compel men to Jesus. The reason is because there's one area walking and for every one area walking, there are at least five areas of terrible frustration. My assignment is to show you that even if you are a rich young ruler, there is still one thing lacking. And Jesus said there is one thing you lack. There is one thing you lack. Hallelujah. The existence of ignorance and darkness in one area of a believer's life can frustrate the joy and the results experienced in another area. For instance, your spiritual life doing well versus your finances doing poorly. Your spiritual life doing excellently and then your health being troubled. Are we together? Here's what I wrote. This places a responsibility on the believer to identify areas of ignorance and press for knowledge in those areas until you become a portrait of wholesome excellence and perfection. This is the reason why in spite of the results that we get, we keep pressing as though we've not started. And we... We'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you one more time and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you we must never allow the results experienced in some areas to blind us from seeing the darkness in other areas we must never never allow be grateful for that which god is already doing but never allow the results you're experiencing in one area of your spiritual life blind you or stop you from seeking light in another area thank god for the health of my prayer life thank god for my finances but i'm still yet to meet the bills of my family lord i know that you are able to do this also show me the principles connected to rest in this area are we together now oh i'm doing well a great job i have a great job great pay but something is wrong with my prayer life something is wrong with my fasting something is wrong with my word life you are doing well financially but at the expense of your spiritual life father show me how i can be whole i can be vibrant financially and I can be exceptional spiritually. One does not have to suffer because of the presence of the other. Hallelujah. Herein lies the frustration of many believers. They do not know how to reconcile being grateful for something God is doing and having a desire that He should do more. Are we together?
thank God you've given me a child but something is wrong with this child and sometimes you feel guilty should I still ask God to do something more absolutely God desires that we press on to perfection this is what we call the covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken one more time nothing missing one last time nothing missing do you believe there is such a reality yes sir that the believer can get to a point like abraham in genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 the bible says and now abraham was old and well stricken in age and the bible says read with me if you can see projected ready one to go uh-huh and god had blessed him in how many things so there's a way that god can come through for a man that you wake up in the morning and all you have is thanksgiving there is such a state in a believer's life if you don't believe it you will never step into it apostle are you saying in this wicked world i can find rest round about so says the bible so says the bible and it is unto you according to your faith no you don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy when you claim their pain it becomes yours when you claim their weaknesses it becomes yours i was preaching a few weeks back home and i said i will never repeat after satan if satan says you are a failure i would not repeat it no i prophesied as i was commanded if the holy spirit speaks then i speak again homologio that's where the word confession comes from it matters who you are repeating after are we together now let's consider one other thing we're making progress how do you know the areas of ignorance and darkness in your life this is very powerful now how do i know that there is an area of ignorance and darkness in my life because the the call is to press towards perfection the call is to press to become the most accurate portrait of a believer that you can become that you become such a portrait of the believer that many people will see Jesus in his purest form revealed through your life. Are we together now? That you do not misrepresent Jesus when people see you. That every aspect of your life becomes wholesome. It may not happen initially, but it must become your project. And you never rest. The Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God. There remained a rest. You don't feel bad if you've not attained onto that state but it must become a project when you wake up in the morning you know that i can be perfected by knowledge here and now not in the sweet by and by here and now there is such a possibility that's why god gave us his word that's why god gave us the holy spirit hallelujah how do i know the areas of ignorance and darkness in my life. I'll give you three keys very quickly. Number one, by looking onto Jesus. The first way you know the area that is not working is to compare your life with this standard called Jesus. If you cannot look onto Jesus, your verdict about yourself will be wrong. You need to look at Jesus because he's our pattern man, the Bible says. He's the portrait. Jesus Christ is God's expectation about the believer personified. God's expectation about the believer personified. God's expectation about the believer personified is called Jesus. Jesus is not an idea. He's a person. Are we together? The Bible says when he came, he was full of grace and truth. So how did Jesus walk upon the earth? was he limited what did he do in the presence of challenges how many of you know that his dying was not a product of weakness it was to fulfill prophecy jesus said i have the power to lay it down i also have the power to pick it up until he gave himself he was indomitable no one could kill him it didn't matter the antagonisms around his time he would walk freely, move freely, heal the sick, demon saw him and ran away. And the Bible says, as he is, not even as he was, as he is, it says, so are we, except we do not believe the word of God. 
the believer's faith must be anchored upon the integrity of scripture let god be true and every man a liar it doesn't matter what your current spiritual experience is don't feel condemned but don't condone limitations don't condone it let it be your project knowing that i have not paul said not that i have already attained i have not attained but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me he uses a brilliant expression i press I press not I desire not I wish not I hope I press towards the mark there is a mark there is a mark ladies and gentlemen the mark of the high calling the high calling this is what Paul meant when he said the sufferings of our present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us How do I know the areas of darkness in my life? By looking unto Jesus. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he was healthy and sound. Sound enough to fulfill his father's assignment. So by using the portrait Jesus, I have a right to fight every sickness troubling my life. Call it a blood disease, with all due respect, call it a genotype issue. Whatever it is, it becomes your project to fight it. Because you have looked on to Jesus. He becomes the worthy reference, not your background, Jesus. Every time Jesus had a need, there was a way the answer came. Whether it was through a fish, whether it was through a woman with an alabaster box, that means there are systems of supplies. If you are like Jesus... There was no land there was no territory he went to fulfilling the father's assignment that supplies were not there please do not say uk is a harsh place it is unto you according to your faith now this is this is forgive me forgive me in advance forgive me but i'm provoking you unto godliness one time they came to embarrass him on account of the gospel and he said peter reach for the fish what should a fish be doing with a coin that means god can bend over to use unusual situations for his namesake it's not about a fish it's not about a coin it's about a strategy that is not usual yes i know that the natural cause for things is that you can get a property and gradually through your job yes there is a place for diligence but make sure you don't ignore a fish when you see it coming. A fish can be a mysterious helper that shows up in your life once, used by God to open a door for you and never returns. The fish did not bring coin every day. When you now want to make the fish bring coin every day, you are walking in violation with God's principle. But as you obey God, once in a while, that fish will come. Once in a while. Yes. It's a system of advantage. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship you. One more time. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Kadosh, we worship you. So we are provoked unto perfection when we look at the perfect portrait, Jesus. Did Jesus ever need the assistance of men and lacked men? He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? Anything. <laughs> anything. When I sent you, not when you went. When I sent you, 
lacketh thou anything. When I sent you, many of you do not know you are sent. That's why the resources to back you is not yet there. You still have the mentality of just trying to make it, make ends meet, you say. But if you know you are an ambassador, then you know the jealousy of heaven. There is an investment upon you. I want you to believe this. Please be seated for a while. So the way we identify the areas of darkness in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, and, and I hope our online family are following very carefully. You look unto Jesus. If you do not look unto Jesus, you will be satisfied in the midst of nothing. Jesus is the reference. If your prayer life is going down and it's not a source of concern, it's because you've not looked unto Jesus. When you look unto Jesus, it will provoke you that the disparity is too wide. You are frustrating the grace of God. And then it, it calls you. This is the correct, you should not be condemned. No, his presence does not condemn, but it challenges you that there is a highest, a higher bar that you must lift over your life. Are we together? When Jesus needed to have a triumphant entry, he said, go to the street whose roads divide. You will find a cult that no man had ridden on. I've shared the mystery with you. There are people holding things they were not supposed to use. It's for you. They are only caretakers. Now, I'm not saying it from a carnal standpoint. <laughs> there are people who have proven to be faithful stewards. And God will give them things. And they will, be, they will have an instruction on it. Keep it until the person who will use it comes. Then give it to them. The Bible says a colt that no man had ridden on. The question is, why will I buy a colt and not ride on it? The person kept it there. And it says, when they ask you, tell them the master, the real owner has come. Are we together? There are people holding properties today in UK. Honestly speaking, they know it is not their own. Eventually, by a mystery only God can tell. I'm not talking of taking people's property as a fraudster. I'm with the dignity of kingdom integrity, God opening mysterious doors for you. That when people ask you, how did you get this property? You will tell them, I know the equation is diligence plus wisdom plus relationships plus God. That's what produced that kind of answer. Are we together? So we know the area of darkness in our lives by looking unto Jesus, comparing our current spiritual state using the reference Jesus. Number two, how do we know the areas of ignorance and darkness in our lives? Are you ready for number two? By looking unto exceptional models, exceptional human models who have excelled in life. We look unto Jesus but we also look on to exceptional human models. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I confess to you that I've not met many of them, but my goodness, I have met exceptional people. I have met people who have taken the word of God and given it frame in their lives. They have built an exceptional and an enviable Christian life. You talk of character, you will find it. You talk of godliness, you will find it. You talk of wealth, you will find it. Well-behaved children, you will find it. Influence, you will find it. They are such an enviable portrait of Jesus. There are such people on earth. If you seek, you will find. My prayer is that every one of us, that we evolve to become such portraits. That when people are looking to see the possibilities that God can rot through a man, God recommends you within a territory. When people are saying, I, I need to know that God answers prayer, God will send you as a living epistle that they can read his faithfulness through your life and know that God answers prayer. Are we together? The Bible calls us living epistles. You know what that means? That your life should be a continuation of somebody's Bible study. That when they look at your life, where they stopped in their room, you become the opening of their Bible and they keep reading possibilities through your life. 
Hallelujah. Does God bless? You can say yes without believing it. But let me tell you how God answers you. He sends a man he has blessed. And he says, I stand as a witness that God prospers. And God says, follow them. Does God anoint? Oh yes, I think he did in the Bible. Then he sends a man who is an epitome of his hand and his grace. Can the nature of God really be made manifest in the life of a man in this our bedeviled world? Then he sends a man with solid character and he stands before you that even in a crooked and a perverse generation, you can stand for Christ. Are we learning? living epistles so we look on to jesus to see the areas of darkness in our lives and to contend to be like him then we look on to men who by the sacrifice of alignment have been able to attain onto a commendable level of perfection yes sir they have captured within their space a rich heritage of spiritual possibilities and on account of that god can recommend them across territories as worthy references so when you are praying and say father please i want you to bring this is why listen do you know why testimonies are powerful because men through testimonies personify possibilities we have one of our precious ladies here who gave her testimony during the sound of revival 20 how many weeks 23 weeks she gave birth to a baby at 23 weeks that baby should die but god so you see that now a testimony becomes a sign and a wonder when you can read the letter that comes with it every miracle has a letter from heaven most people celebrate the miracle but they don't read the letter there is every miracle is a letter from jesus to you I am still alive. I still walk wonders. I can still do it again and again and again and again and again. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's what God is doing over someone's life. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy and you turn it for good when peter and john stood at gate beautiful the crippled man, tired, frustrated. I like what Peter said. Look on us. A man can tell you, look on us. And it is not pride. He's saying there's something we carry. Not all. We are still students of the spirit. But we've made commendable progress to inspire you. Look on us. I'm praying that after today's service, that someone can look at someone in your family and say, we are still students in the school of the spirit, but as touching God's faithfulness, look on us, look on us. God has prospered, look on us. God has helped, look on us. God can increase, look on us. God can restore. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Listen, a man can tell other men, look on us. Not with the attitude of pride, as touching the mercy of God that you've made commendable progress as far as attaining perfection is concerned you can tell people I have not found every key but I found certain keys and I can give it to you while I discover others oh there are keys there are keys there are keys and not everyone is looking for every key what you are looking for has been found by someone already are we together now the favor you seek the keys that command favor have been found i tell you they've been found by certain people the key to the presence of god has been found by certain people the keys to commanding signs and wonders not everyone is still looking for it there are men by grace and mercy who have found it it's called laying hold on eternal life you can give substance to your christian experience
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.